Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'll be going over a Fox Go server game between two professionals, uh, the white player being Mi Yu Ting and the black player being Tan Zhao. Um, it, I picked this game because you'll see by the end of the game there is a huge fight, a humongous fight. Um, and I think one, not only is it very entertaining, but two, there's actually a lot to learn from both players here and how they handle the fights. So let's let's take a look at it. Um, and we'll see actually, not only do we get a cross Fuseki, which is pretty uncommon nowadays, but we also get, wait for it, no 3-3 invasions, or at least no direct 3-3 invasions. So that's, that's always nice um, to see. 3-3 sure is fun and it's uh, trendy, but it can get, it can get uh, repetitive after a while. So it's nice to see that not being played. Um, and we'll actually see this opening. It's actually kind of like a mix of new AI stuff and kind of old, I say old, but I guess pre-AI kind of opening theory moves. So, um, yeah, let's take a look. Starting with this move. Again, not an AI move, but it was definitely made trendy from AI. Um, and white chooses a variation to take sente. So white takes sente, and there's a reason why white wins sente. It's to get... Uh, this move here. This move, not only is it an extension from white's upper left, but it's also putting some more pressure on the black group. And usually, maybe a kind of common sequence. Um, you'll see the kick, and then there's many moves here, but just one of them being kick and then jump, just preventing white from staying connected. Um, and this is, of course, playable. Black can look to invade the left or the bottom, and has kept white separated, but black chooses to jump and build the top side, which is again, of course, playable. And white splits the right side. And this sort of move is kind of what I was alluding to earlier, where this sort of like just in the middle of the side of the board is pretty uncommon nowadays, at least at top professional level. Uh, usually you would see some move in directly, maybe this one here, or I'll even see. Um, uh, this one sometimes, just some move to try to get as much of the right side as possible. So seeing this move, again, is a, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> it's nice to see um, this move. And back, black plays there. This is setting up, or was being set up from black's move here. It's helping prepare for an invasion on the left side. And so since white's move unlike the AI moves where it's the direct attachments in the upper right, it's not Sente, so Black's able to ignore. And this is actually the move you want to play to put some some pressure in the upper left. The idea being if you get the next move, um, you're looking to do some kick here and over-concentrate White. Um, so of course, the proper move for White is to just um, prevent the kick. White might think to be kind of proactive here but the kick is just too too good for black so just to no dive as normal and black says okay I've sent white to the second line so that's good enough and then answers so you can see black is planning on answering this move but black just took his sente first and so that's something very important is if you know your move is sente you're able to play it so even though black is planning on playing at r12 or r13 in this case Black gets his sente first. Now, R13 is a strange move. Usually you want to extend all the way because this puts more pressure on that white stone. And it makes black have a bigger bigger area. Black got one line more. I'm guessing, though, when white jumps here, if white were to jump here next, you can see it leaves very obvious weakness at R14. And group that with... Attachments at R17 and Q16. Yeah, it's really... If black has to add an extra move, even if black jumps with white, black would rather have just spent one move to seal off that area than having to spend a move later. So going here, not that white would go here now, but just uh, for the sake of argument, now that upper right is completely safe. Completely safe. So black is looking to actually come into the right side. That's what black is looking to do. White defends the lower left. And so then black comes into the right side. 
Again, nice, nice preparation. A lot of players might see the lower, lower right. But if something like this happens and white just extends, you can see white is just okay. And black's taking a smaller slice of the right side. So uh, going here first, definitely a nice pre preparation move. And, and we've seen this a lot by black as well. Um, black goes there. And yeah, maybe just because of AI thinking is I'm thinking, okay, I want to maybe kick and then pincer this somehow. Maybe go here. Not only does this give me an, a small base, but it also takes away black space. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's this one. Oops. Um, that's the game move, by the way. But I'm not sure if it's this one. Uh, white should go here or white just jumps. I'm not sure the best move, but I want to do something like this. But white instead, once again, going back to kind of classic moves, if you will, just takes the corner. Doesn't even touch that black stone. So black does get the extension. White jumps. And black jumps. Black's able to jump a little bit faster than white because black has an extra stone here at r6 and white just jumps with black and black just jumps again and now white says okay I'm sufficiently out into the center it's time to go after the upper right now black comes up doesn't want to just take the cash here after this if black has to just come back and connect somehow, something like this, black, sure, black takes a corner, but white has really reduced black. So there's no way black's going to do that. Black's going to fight a little bit. White jumps. Again, want to stay light. You might want to save that stone, but when you look back a few moves, who is strong in that area? Black is. And so... And white has a weak group on the right side as well. So white needs to think about Sabaki. Needs to think about staying light. So you'll see all of white's moves. You might be tempted to just connect your stones. But it's going to... Whenever you add a stone next to another stone, it's gotten heavy. It's gotten heavy. So white's just avoiding that. Just jumping. Black threatens to push through. And again, just connecting directly is making the group heavy. Even if, even if black just connects back or does something you're getting heavier so white attaches here and again trying to poke at black shape and this attachment is just the 3-3 so black extends up um, black Hanes, white's white will now actually be looking to play this one and do something like that it's a very efficient way to come out so black just stands up Leaving Samaji in the corner, though. But, of course, the corner is not what's important. White continues in the center with this move. Once again, thinking about staying light. It's, it's very natural to want to just block here. But it's just making white heavier. So white just jumps. And then black shoulder hits. Yeah, very nice move, especially once black got this uh, jump at M8. Very natural move. Um, so white answers and black extends and you can see black is doing the same thing <laughs> that white was in the upper right black is maintaining light shape so white comes in kind of just asking black okay black how are you going to protect your cut because there's many ways for black to do it so right getting it right now um, I think is good timing um, it also prevents later if black gets sente moves like this where white has to block and black can go here. This move sente, and you can see um, black can actually get a very healthy base there in the center. So white wants to prevent that. So white just plays right in the middle, and black fixes uh, his shape there. White extends, then black connects back again, just staying light. That's so important. That's so important. Um, and a lot of players might be tempted to. Ooh, this is cuttable. And to just fight this immediately. Um, but you got to be careful about what you're affecting on the other side. So let's say, maybe this is the Atari's a little crude, but just for example, you can see white's starting to look very weak in the upper right. And the upper right's bigger than the bottom. So maybe white is able to capture the bottom. 
if black's able to just take the right side though that's much bigger much bigger yes um, plus with the Aji of g3 in the lower left these stones still have Aji whereas these stones here have very little Aji on the right side so white doesn't do that just leaves it for later who, who needs to do it now? If black has to protect later and spend a move to do it, that's fine by me. So, white just plays a very nice Teisuji here, actually. Using this stone at R17. Black blocks. Can't let white connect if black, I don't know, does something like this. That's, yeah, now the, now the upper right is worth something. Now the upper right is worth something. So black blocks. And now white connects. This is very good timing. Very, very good timing. And then white bumps there. It's a very nice sequence of moves here, just using the Aji that's there in the corner. That's there in the corner. Black pushes, and white just, again, doesn't, doesn't block. This, this is, this would be um, lights out for white. It's very big, so white just plays there, and black pushes, and then white descends here. And this descend is actually very good timing, because if black were to do this right now, this would of course be horrible for black. This would be horrible for black. So of course black's going to Hane. But what this does is later this means white can play here in Sente. And this affects if, um, let's say, yeah, white goes here. When black descends here, it means white, again, the timing is important, but it means this sort of move is Sente, which would be disconnecting black stones here. Um, in this example, again, this wouldn't happen, but if, in this example, if black cuts white off, if white just cuts here, black would connect, and white's actually not alive. White can, can actually, oops, uh, white can actually just cut, though, like this. Um, and this would be much, much more potent. If black, black has to connect, and if white just fills in liberties like this you can see black would win by one it's two liberties to three liberties but there is a way for white to reduce black's liberties um, first it's by when black Han is here white can throw in once again this is sente tari patari and capture so you can see white can force black to play a T19, which takes away his own liberty. So that's what the purpose of that move is. Again, is this going to happen? No, but it just means when white plays here, it is sente. Now, if the reason why white does it now, though, is... Let's say white goes here. Now, if white descends, now it's not so much sente. When white descends here, black's just going to connect but once again white's not alive so very good timing very very good timing it's just see how black's gonna answer and of course now black's in a hane but that means now there's aji on the side there now this move is also interesting this is a very nice uh one it's a very nice light move but it's also actually very hard for black to attack because when you when you're attacking you're like okay what can i where can i profit from this and also, where are White's um, kind of friends nearby to to help this stone? So let's say Black pushes White this direction. Well, White would just connect, and Black's not really gaining much in this area here. So Black doesn't want to do that. Um, if Black goes from this direction, though, once again, White just can jump to safety. And once again, Black's not getting much in return so black doesn't know how he wants to answer and so because of that black actually just ignores I don't know how I, I want to handle this so I'm just going to ignore for now and maybe the board will change by then and I'll be able to decide easier and if white just wants to fix then this is enough profit for me I'll just take <laughs> I'll just take the bottom. So it's a very nice timing here. Black doesn't know how black wants to attack that stone at Q14. So don't. So don't. Just leave it. Black wedges. And then we get into a co variation here. White attaches. 
and this might seem strange, but black actually just turns here. One, this is also this is actually looking to attack here because this is adding a stone that's facing the center, but it's also making it so. Like, let's say white started the ko at some point, like here. When black wins this ko, um, again, I don't know, white does something. When white, when black wins this ko, this is how black has to win it. And again, it's a good result for black, but you can see black shape is kind of, eh, it's not great. Um, oops, one second. By going here, though, with this turn, now if black white starts to co it's a much bigger co now because if black wins it now black doesn't need to fill here black can actually just take here so it's making it harder for white to play this co because the result is much better for black so that's the idea um yeah that's the idea of there because some players might think to do this but again this is not what black's trying to do here black's looking to attack this stone at the top so white just takes, doesn't even fight the ko. But again, black really doesn't care about the corner when black's plan, as you can see, black has a lot of center stones right now. White has a lot of territory, but black has a lot of center stones. So black's looking to use that. Um, and also this turn is helping um, with this push and cut here later. It's helping with the, the strength of this bottom group. Uh, this push and cut here, by the way. It's helping with the strength of the bottom group, so. So white just takes. And then black. Hanes. It's the shape point of the of the um, of the group there. Atari. Atari. And then um, connect. And this connect is actually a little strange because my, my instinct is to go here. Like this. Um, with this move. There's, there's two ways black can play this. Um, black and Atari. And go here. Now if white tries to save this, this does not work. It looks like it's starting to be a squeeze. But when black pushes here, you can see white is unable to squeeze anymore. This Atari and go here just, just doesn't work for white. This would be game over. Um... So that's so white instead will Atari here and do the squeeze. But white has to come back and um, do something about these two stones with maybe this sort of move here. And then black's able to attack this stone from afar. And white probably didn't like this result. Even though white, white got a squeeze, you can see black's able to actually cut through white here. Um, yeah, and this is also very big. The other way for black to play oops, is to try to throw in. And this would be trying to set up a co, co shape here, where white's unable to fill. So white has to play uh, probably, uh, oops, sorry, probably this one here. Uh, but this co is just too much, of course, for white. So can't do that. Um, instead, though, white will probably just connect. And we'll be happy. So the, the code is a nice idea for black, but it just wouldn't play out. But white just connects. And black gets to save. White cuts. This is, once again, you'll see is using this Aji here. That's what white's looking to do. So white, black just takes. And white's looking to squeeze here. And this squeeze is very nice. Um, locally, does white get a capture or anything? No, but you'll see white gets a bunch of free moves. And then this wedge here. Very nice move. Got to protect that cut. Uh, and black, yeah. Black has to just do something there. Um, if black connects, of course, white's going to win that semi-eye. So, if white tried to win the semi-eye first, though, um, without this move here, black can cut. Can cut. So, this move was necessary. Why the Tauris? Connect, connect, cut, and then extend. And so this fight has kind of settled down, at least very locally it's settled down. But let's look at the result. Black was able to take some cash on the right side. It's a very ugly shape, to be fair. Um, but white has a 
baseless group um, that has half an eye. Uh, there is one eye here, so that is important to think to, to uh, know. Notice Black's unable to take that eye out because it's short on liberties. But other than that, White has no sort of eye space. But White has also cut Black off the right side and the center group. So maybe it slightly favors Black. I would like Black here, but it's definitely not unplayable for White. So when Black extend White, because of the weakness in the uh, of the, how weak the White group is, Black pushes through. And then now black attacks. Now black sees, okay, now that I've weakened the the right side group, I've taken out its base, I now know how I want to attack. I want to split these two groups. And this is going straight at the shape point there. And the next few moves, just remember what black's plan was. It's to keep white separated. So you'll see white's trying to connect with the left side group. So black hanes. Or not doesn't even hane, sorry. Just extends. White makes good shape. Black pushes through. I think this is just um, uh, time suji. Doesn't really help the local uh, situation at all. So black turns. And then black plays a very powerful move. It's very subtle, but it's a very powerful move of this move here. Not only does it help this stone that black cut with, but it's really damaging this upper side group. And once again, since black's adding a stone here, it's indirectly attacking the right side. So once again, a very, very strong move. Uh, black might think to do some move like this. But white going here, again, because the stone is so weak, would be sente and white starting to make an eye there. So again, very, very strong group or move. And white is hanes. Yeah, white, of course, this is bigger than the top. So white has to do something here. And then Tengen to protect the cut here. And once again, what is black trying to do? To split white. So black just keeps splitting white. White comes down. And this is threatening to cut. If white is able to push and cut, I believe white is able to capture these stones. But black just says, I don't care. This is, of course, much, much bigger. So always be willing to trade in a fight. Because... If you're not willing to trade, you're usually going to lose initiative, right? Like the whole point of this move here is to split white. And sure, black is attacking both groups, but of course black would rather <laughs> would rather have the huge dragon on the right side. So white's starting to settle this group, so okay, I'll just go after this group. White Hanes, and even double Hanes. And the, the point of this is white's willing to give up this stone here, if black wants it, maybe black goes here. But white will then be able to get a bunch of forcey moves in the center, which is helping white's eye space. And then we'll be able to maybe play some sort of move to live. Again, I'm not sure exactly, but that's that's the basic idea. Is white's trying to get black to cut to get forcing moves. But white's not, white's not, or black's not biting. And white descends. Look at this, such a calm move. <laughs> I would be freaking out about that right side, but White just says, well, if you can't kill me, this move is probably the biggest move on the board. So yeah, very, very calm move, very, very calm move. And Black just answers, because again, Black, even though Black would like the right side, doesn't Black doesn't matter what Black gets. Black realizes he can probably win if he gets either the top or the right side. White jumps. And then black attaches. Attached to the strong group to attack the weak group. So black is attaching here. But black is actually looking to attack the uh, upper side group. White extends. And then black push pushes. Um, and white extends of course. That has to be the move. Black cuts here now. Uh, to capture. White has to connect. Black takes. White pushes. Black is forcing white to push, which is in turn attacking this upper side group. Notice white is forcing black to add stones that are facing the upper side group. And then black goes for the throat. This is the strongest move to play here and right at the shape point. White connects. Black turns. And even though white gets to squeeze here, 
This is all forced, even though white gets to squeeze here. White locally is not alive. White locally is not alive. Um, and white tries to, um, or just kind of asks, I guess, how black wants to answer here. And there's a very nice move black plays. Uh, this move here. This move is such a nice move. Where, one, it's, it's actually looking to help make protect some cuts here potentially um, like if black tries to just simply go here something like this there is some some cuts here is the idea so black's looking to protect that by going here where even though white can play here because of this move black played earlier and this is where just having a sense of this move will help later playing this move uh, where is it a little bit further back. Yeah, this attachment here. Did Black read this whole sequence out? You know, maybe he did. This was a faster game, but Black just knew that this move would probably come in to help him. So, very nice planning, really. It's really it really is planning and reading as well. Where you'll see after this, after White pokes at Black's shape here. Black's able to go here, and Black's actually completely connected. If you go back and play the sequence without this exchange, this D14 for C13 exchange, Black would just be cut into smithereens. And so Black played a nice move at D14. It's White's turn to play a nice move of... Maybe not that one. <laughs> that one's not super exciting. It is helping White get a base and reducing Black, so for that, in that regard it is, but this attachment here so what is the point of this attachment the point of it is white is looking to play here force black to connect and then um, clamp but notice by pushing this exchange by itself if white doesn't have to play it white doesn't want to so white just plays white knows this is on the board but white just doesn't make that exchange Maybe that liberty will come to be important. Maybe there's another way for white to push. Like maybe later uh, white wants to go here and cut here. Right? So there's there's many moves white want, might want to play there. So white just plays directly here. So and what this is, is it's just looking to cut the black, the black knight's move here. As well as being that clamp that I was showing. So black fixes that though. And then white covers, black extends, cuts, white throws in at the shape point, white pushes, throws in, this is for liberties, it's to make black fill in his own liberties, and then turns. So locally what do we have happening? Um, now we have this upper right, or this upper white group cut off, and this black group cut off. But also, this whole white group on the right side is still just floating. It's still just floating. So black turns there. So this whole time, black is still actually looking at the uh, right side here. Which is now grown into the center. Um, yeah, very. it's very subtle, but this move here... Um, which one was it? This extension here was setting that up. Was setting that up. Is black is actually looking to get this turn here and this move also helps because it's helping to if white answers somewhere in the center I don't know where maybe there black would then be able to do some sort of cut here so it's also helping that regard so it's sente is basically sente cutting off white um, in the center so white has to answer and white answers I'd be kind of maybe scared to play this but it's very necessary when the semi is going on taking away this outside liberty is very important but black just says okay i'll just surround you so now this semi here is white has a lot of outside liberties black has an eye um so it's actually very it's very difficult to know who's going to win this especially if white's able to get some sort of move like this um i guess black can throw in once but maybe black doesn't want to i'm not sure but um when something like this is happening. So you can see it's gonna be an eye versus an eye. Um, it's, it's very it's very difficult to tell. Um, 
I guess by eyeballing it, I guess if you read it out, you could. But the important thing is that doesn't matter when this whole right side group is in danger. That is obviously much, much bigger. So black, white attaches. Black just captures or threatens to capture. White bumps, connect, and white covers. This is starting to make an eye uh, in the center. Black takes out that gote eye, and by itself, it's also a big move if black's able to cut there. So it's not only taking away an eye, but it's also um, big on points when black cuts there. So white's, again, once again, white's just trying to make some eyes, and keep in mind, this group at the bottom was cut off, so black does have to be a little careful. Black plays there, again, looking to take away the eye. Like once again, Sente, Black's threatening to take away that eye. And then Black pushes. And Black just goes for it. Black, Black just goes for it. And in his defense, White is completely surrounded. And um, yeah, why not? Just go for it, see what happens. Um, White can take first though. Black, that's Sente. Sente, White covers. Black has to cut, and now we can see what has happened. Once again, White has cut Black off in the center, or at the bottom, but White is, himself has cut off in the center. But keep in mind, the upper left is still unresolved too, where White is cut off and Black's cut off. So, just by eyeballing it, it looks like half of the stones on the board, both Black and White stones, um, are undecided. I'm pretty sure. Their, their lives are just question marks right now so that's this is what I was referring to before referring to at the beginning where you just have just till the end of the game because of course these are this is going to be a uh, game ending fight whatever happens here so all the way till the end of the game you can see just there's just chaos everywhere on the board so it's a very very fun game very very fun game um, but as well a lot to learn from so white extends here. This is a very nice move because I would be tempted to do this one and do it this way, right? Do it, doing it this way. And this way probably has its merits, but white's way was probably more direct. It's probably more direct. Uh, this is the way I would kind of consider doing it. White goes here though. Black has to Atari here, but then when white descends, it's an Atari. And white has... You have to be pretty confident you have co-threats when you play this one, by the way. And of course, white does. Because white can push there. Again, this is Sente. Uh, there's no way black can give up that and let white capture the entire right side. No way. And black actually plays an interesting move here. Is black's playing... Thinking about the co. Because this move does protect the co, but it allows white later to capture the four stones. So you might think, okay, well, maybe black should go, uh, oops, maybe black should go um, here. But this would give white many more co-threats. Um, it means this is a co-threat. It means this is a co-threat. And then if, if, black, if black gives it up anyways, it would give black, what is that, or white two more threats and then be able to capture here later. Anyways, oops, too far, too far, too far. Um, if black wants to keep the four stones, that's another co-threat. That's another co-threat. That's another, you can just see a white just has, what is it? What do they, what do they call it? The co-factory? Co just, just a, it's too many, too many co-threats there. And sure, would locally this be losing white points? Sure. But this doesn't matter when whoever's going to win the game is uh, whoever wins this co in these fights here. So white's, white's willing to give up those um, stones there. So black says, okay, no co-threats for you. I'm just going to take it. So white just gets one more co-threat here of this one. So, so what happens? White, black connects as their co-threat. White connects. Black pushes through. And white throws in. Black takes once. Again, white uses that extra co-threat there on the right side. And then this is an Atari. There's no co-threats right now. Even if even if there maybe was, black has to just go here once. Um, and then white goes here again. 
And this is once again thinking about co-threats, where you might be tempted to, okay, I want to take away liberty, but this would give Black extra co-threats of Atari and then the cut. So it would just give Black more co-threats. So White says, no more co-threats for you. Even though I would like to take away that liberty, I'm just going to make sure you have no local threats. Black takes a co, so where's White's threats? Where's White's threats? White connects. Mm -hmm. Black connects. And White connects. So now, the co has settled down. Black was able to extend some liberties. Um, which is going to be helpful uh, in the center, of course. And Black gets the first move, so Black cuts. Black cuts. White Ataris. Um... Yeah, it looks like black might want to do this one. Oops. Uh, black might want to do that one. Or do some move to take away liberties. But white connecting here is actually big on liberties because because of the shortage of liberties here, white gets two, two liberties here. And potential to make more in the center as well. Or at least black's, black, has still, black still has to fill in a liberty here. So I think it's better. Plus, again, thinking about points... Um, it gets black some points there as well. The white Ataris and connects. Black Ataris. And then starts filling in Liberty. So, it might feel like, okay, well, why did black not make an eye? We have a semi-eye here. White has an eye. Surely black would like to make an eye. You know, the whole, the whole saying of whoever has an eye and a semi-eye, or eye versus no eye, has an advantage. In this case... It's because there are no shared liberties. If there were shared liberties, yes, whoever has an eye is going to have a big advantage. They don't win every time, but they'll have a huge advantage in the liberty race. But because all these liberties are shared, Black just making his eye here actually just takes away one of his liberties. It technically keeps it the same because White has to spend two moves to take away this N5 liberty. But it's, it's three liberties, or it's... Um, three liberties here so it's the same thing it's the same but white's just they're just taking away liberties white takes the co once and white's filling in liberties and then white connects here so white is basically offering a trade here where black can fill here but white will be able to live up top something like this and capture the entire upper left. Because remember, this while this whole co at the bottom is happening, this entire upper side is still left. <laughs> it's still a question mark. And believe it or not, even though Black would capture all these stones, it's actually not enough to, to win. Um, because this is all Black has. And remember, Black lost points on the lower right for, for the sake of co-threats. So all... All of Black's points are right here, which again is huge, but in this case it would not be enough, especially when White captures the upper left in this sort of scenario. So Black actually has to um, answer. Going there, right there. Black just fills in the final liberty. So now it's a direct Atari when Black takes. White Hanes, once again, Black has to keep capturing, but you can see White has a lot of threats there then. White has a lot of threats there then. And then black cuts. So this move... Well, well, let's just see what happens. So black cuts. White just ignores, though. Atari. Black has to connect once. And now it's it's a direct co. Because uh, if... If it, let's say, white makes a co-threat. I don't know. Something. Something like this. Even though black has two liberties there. Um... White, this is an Atari now. So now, even though Black has two liberties, White just needs that extra liberty from the Co to capture. So it's a direct Co now. So when White pushes here, Black has to give it up like this. Now Black captures and wins the Co. And how many stones is that? That's at least 20 stones, 25 stones, I, I would imagine. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. But when White goes here... Believe it or not, it is not enough. It really is not enough. Um, yeah, it, it's it's shocking. It really is, but it's just just not enough. So they play a few more games in Endgame. Black even plays a Time Suji. 
even gets to play a nice fancy move here. White just extends, Atari. Um, white cuts. And the game just um, ends when white Atari is here. Black actually resigns here. Because it's, even though black wins that humongous co, white just has, that's or that's all black has. White has a decent side lower left, a pretty big lower right, and a huge upper left. So White's just able to uh, win the game at this point. Um, I think what would have given Black a better chance is it, it feels like no matter what was going to happen. So basically, how do I want to say this? Black's co-threat here ended up meaning nothing because White ended up capturing that upper left anyways. So Black needed to play an actual co-threat, and I think there was one. Is Black could have atari here. Because remember, White Black is... No matter what, Black's going to lose that upper left. So, let's say White... If White answers, let's say White answers. And Black takes. It still leaves the question of... What's big enough for White? Um, like, well, Black has to answer these, I guess. So, I guess it's not super clear. Because Black still has to answer these moves. Um, yeah, I guess it really doesn't matter. But what I was trying to say was... If Black made an actual threat... And White ignored it to make it a direct co. Like this. In the game, like White ended up capturing here. But instead of Black just wasting a co threat by cutting here, Black would be able to capture here because White ignored this threat. And that would, of course, be. <laughs> that would be a win for Black then because Black's able to take that entire lower left. But I guess White just has so many threats on the upper side, it just didn't matter. And just to show, what if Black was the one who gave up um, the upper, or the lower side? Like, let's say, goes here. Atari. Go here. Play the Ko. Like, let's say Black went here. Did something like this. Oops. Uh, white pushed once. Black. Let's say Black answers. White takes, and Black plays something at C15, like this. What if white takes the bottom like this? And just for simplicity's sake, I'll just take the co once, just so we see what it looks like. So in this case, black would actually take the upper side and the upper left, but it's actually still, when white goes here, it's actually still not... Still, either way, it's going to be a loss. Even though black can capture either or, since white can capture either or as well, and black, white has more territory on that, it just, nothing works for black. So... A very exciting co, but there's actually probably no way for Black to win the co. Um, and yeah, so the game ended um, at this point when White Atari here and Black Black resigned here as well. So yeah, very one a very nice. I think the opening was actually very nice in this game. Um, very simple and I think pretty easy to understand. And the fighting, I even think to some degree, with the, some of the shapes they were playing was. Um, also very nice to watch and entertaining. L lots of beautiful shapes, lots of very nice shapes as well. Um, and then, of course, this huge just bloodbath at the end is, of course, what all all Go fans love. So, yeah, this game had it all, basically. Um, and I, I don't think I mentioned it early on, but this game was also 15-second Bioyomi, um, which is insane, which is insane. Um, but, yeah, very, very fun and exciting game and a lot to learn from it as well. Um, as always, I will leave the game record in the description of the video if you want to check it out yourself. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. I try to answer all of them if I see them. And uh, yeah, I'll see everyone in the next video.